Welcome back, watch fans. You know what this means. It's another unboxing or unenveloping. Now, I don't know what this is. I have my thoughts. Um, I think it's another Vanger. Which is good because I've been doing pretty much all Ingersoll's lately. So, let's see. No idea. This could even be Watch Gang. Which, by the way, I'm doing. In case you're curious. No, nope, that's odd. Let's see. Oh. Ooh. Oh, yes, it is. Wow, this is kind of interesting. Nice Venger. Interesting box. I've not seen this one. I've not gotten this box before. Kind of cool. Comes with a little cover. Kind of neat. I think I know what this is. I think this is the... Okay, that didn't say... Ah, look at that. Oh, well, that's nice. Well, it says chronograph. That's not what this is, but still pretty cool. I think it just comes with it. Oh, it's a nice watch. It is the Sport. Okay, well, I'll put it down there at the bottom. i got to figure it out. Brand new. Oh, that's great. Look at that. What a great watch. Oh, man. I love this. All right, let's watch this video. Technically pronounced Wenger, the company dates back to the late 1800s. The company got its start in Switzerland in the canton of Jura. This region is overlooked by the Jura Mountains and famous for a number of watchmakers whose names are too many to list. The company's first line of products include industrial cutlery and butcher equipment. Technically known as Paul Bouchette and C, the company would become known as Wenger after Theodore Wenger, a minister who'd served in the U.S. military, returned to Switzerland and joined Paul Bouchette. They quickly worked to produce a new pocket knife supporting a government contract for the Swiss Army. This contract was split with the company Victorinox, thus beginning the long relationship with the company. For nearly 80 years, Victorinox and Wenger both produced Swiss Army knives. Wenger began production of watches in 1988, a year earlier than Victorinox. Things looked promising for both companies, but they were both hit hard in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. New airline rules outlined the use of pocket knives, which were common among passengers. Eventually, this took its toll on Wenger, and the company was saved from bankruptcy only when Victorinox purchased them. Eventually, Victorinox became the sole producer of the Swiss Army Knife, while, com while both companies continue to produce watches under separate names. While the Wenger brand is known for as an entry-level watch, that's not to say that they haven't produced their share of quality watches. Their most famous high-level watch is the GST Classic, which was a mechanical watch powered by the famous Valjoux 7750 27-joule movement. This watch retailed for over 10,000 US dollars. The watch is extremely rare and came in at every conceivable complication you could imagine to include moon phase, day, date, and month, second time zone, and chronograph. Wenger is truly an underrated brand, and I really cannot emphasize this enough. They produce watches that range from 100 in today's US dollars all the way to 2000 for their high-end watches. Most of the watches I will review from this company will be in the sub-500 range. For the price point, you absolutely get a substantial value, and this watch is no exception. All right, now that you've seen that video, a little bit of history on Wenger. Uh, you know, it's one of my favorite brands. That wasn't obvious. Um, I want to step back a little bit before I really go into this watch and just kind of talk about what I just did um, behind the scenes in between the video. <clears throat> so... When I, I don't know if anybody noticed, but uh, when I open this watch, um, so first thing, interesting, is I have a chronograph manual. This is not a chronograph. It's a great watch, but it's not a chronograph. And also, it was dead. So this is one of the things that I run into a lot when I buy uh, Gray Market. And I don't, I, I don't dislike Gray Market. It affords uh, people like myself to be able to have... A lot of nice watches at very very inexpensive prices. Now, one of the problems, of course, with uh, having gray market is that um, you end up with lots of issues. Like when I got this watch, totally dead. This is the original battery. 
Uh, I would expect nothing else. Good Sony battery, <clears throat> but uh, it was dead, right? So I had to replace it. Um, and when I opened it, of course, I was hit with the stench of fish oil. Now, I don't know if anybody or you guys are watchmakers or what I just like to call watch repairs, which is what I am. Um, I'll repair a watch. I don't actually make my own watches, can't make my gears, but that's semantics. People would disagree with me. But, um, you know, when I open this up, uh, many cases you'll see that the crystal on the inside was cloudy. So I have opened it up and I completely cleaned it with, uh, um, with these cloths. And I have a separate video on that, which I will put up top right there. And it should go across right now and let you know uh, how to clean crystals. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you have to take the watch apart. So of course, second I open the watch, hit with this fish oil smell, and that is essentially essentially the off gassing of the oils in the watch, and so I had to do that on this watch as well. It happens all the time with these gray market. Uh, this watch had probably sat for years. Um, this box, while well, it probably belongs for for this, and, and as a matter of fact, actually it does, uh, and even the part number does, but they probably took the. Um, they probably took this out and gave it to somebody else and then this was one that was sitting around and the guy was like, oh, I'll just stick it in there. That's that's kind of what happens when you buy gray market. Again, it's something you just have to deal with. I could have returned this watch, but I know how to service a watch, so I went ahead and, and just did it. Uh, it's not worth it to me. I really like this watch. Incidentally, um, this watch is the uh, Sport Battalion uh, 79 031 which is the model 79031 gorgeous watch i mean look at this i really like this watch i don't remember what i paid um it wasn't uh it wasn't incredibly expensive but i think it was about over um good 80 or so dollars um you'll notice it is nearly identical to uh the case that i have here you can kind of see they're they're similar in style uh very nice the bezel is identical, except obviously the numbering and uh, the colors. But uh, and this is PVD coated. Very very nice. I, I, gosh, I mean, I really like this watch. This is a rubber, uh, sorry, silicone band. Really like it. Um, what else can I say about it? I mean, it just it feels great. Uh, it it really does. Uh, again, gray market. Just one of the problems that you deal with when you get this. But I love the color. Of this watch this watch is spectacular what a great watch at some point i may choose to put a strap like this on it i don't know i love these nylon straps uh for what i paid for this watch it's probably worthwhile for me to keep it um msrp right there 300 dollars for this watch it is an excellent watch uh, and i'll go into some more details but uh, first i want to talk about the movement it uh, uses a typical ronda movement so let's go and play that quick video so you can understand what you're getting with this watch thank you the Wenger Swiss Military Battalion Sport uses the 515S version of the Ronda Powertech series of movement. The Ronda Powertech 500 series of calibers are affordable, rebuildable quartz movements. These watch movements are available with Swiss made and Swiss parts designations. The 500 series is often found in affordable Swiss luxury timepieces and there are many variations to the movement. So what are the differences? There are a total of eight different versions of the 500 series movements. The 513 includes your basic hours, minutes, and central seconds. The 513S is the same as the 513 but with improved power and hacking feature. The 515 model is the same as the original 513 but with the date at the 3 o'clock position. The 515S, like the 513S, is simply a revised version of the 515. The 515.24D is the same as the 515S However, the second hand is a sub-second at the 6 o'clock location, or it is also used to designate a larger, a larger time uh, date window. The 515.24H is also similar to the 515S, however, it includes a separate 24-hour GMT hand. Next, the 517 also uses the 515S base movement, but with a day of the week wheel in addition to date. Finally, the 519 is based off the 517, but simply utilizes the extra wheel to create a larger double-digit date indicator. There are two versions of this movement, the Swiss Made and the Swiss Parts version. Both are nickel-plated with one jewel. The Swiss Parts version will typically be labeled as such, while the Swiss Made version may typically state Swiss R9 or Swiss Made. 
The 515S movement takes the 371 battery cell, which supports a very powerful stepping motor. Battery life can be supported by up to 10 years with the hacking feature enabled, but will typically last for two to three years when the crown is engaged. Quality of the movement is quite decent for the cost, with a claimed accuracy of plus or minus 10 seconds for the in-house built movement and plus or minus 20 seconds for the non-Swiss parts version. All right, so you know this uses a spectacular five series Ronda movement, good, solid, uh, Swiss made, uh, Swiss movement. Uh, and again, it's the, the uh, uh, it said Ronda Swiss made 99, whatever it was. I, I can't remember what's in the video, but this is in fact the Swiss made version. I mean, excellent watch PVD coating. One thing I've been meaning to say, and I just haven't gotten around to it, yet is that this is in fact a full sapphire crystal. Uh, the one on this watch is only sapphire coated even though it is nearly the same watch. I'm not sure if you can tell the difference, but um, this is full sapphire coating. It is not, uh, I'm sorry, not coating. It is full sapphire, full sapphire crystal. Now let me pull this a little back off so we can see it with all its glory. Um, it is a, <laughs> gosh, sorry, problems. All right. Uh, let's see some other things we can talk about. Yep, so sapphire crystal, um, full stainless steel. It is 100 meter water resistant. Um, I will put the chart up here, right there, so you guys can see. Uh, 100 meters is quite good. That gives you a basic snorkeling. Uh, you would not go scuba diving with this watch, but you can, you can snort. You can certainly snorkel with it. You can go to the beach with it. You can swim in a pool, shower, uh, wash hands, um, sit in the rain, play in the rain, whatever it is that you want to do uh, that involves water. You can do this. Uh, I just would not take this scuba diving. Um, but again, 100 meters. That is the length of a football field essentially, um, or a quarter, quarter track. Uh, high school track so you can do whatever you want with this this silicone strap is excellent um, really like it and this is real stitching in here too uh, and of course it matches the color <clears throat> I would be inclined although this is good I'd be inclined really to replace it with this nylon strap I do one that was black that's just my style I like it um, this is a uh, this has great movement on the <clears throat> on the bezel it's it's really good again it's not a chronograph but this is perfect for uh you know light diving and and uh snorkeling for that matter let's check out the loom because i'm very interested to see what this looks like because from this perspective it's got uh, a yellow loom or orange sorry so let's check that out Oh, interesting. Okay. You know, funny, it looks orange, but it comes out green. That's okay. I like it. It's still good. Orange would have been cool, though. I have to, have to admit. All right, let's 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 do the measurements. If I'm correct, this should be a 42 millimeter. Oh, 43, 40, so we're going to say 44 millimeter. Uh, let's check out the, looks like it's going to be a 22. Yep, 22. And let's check the thickness. 12. So this is a good, solid, everyday watch. I mean, I love this watch. This watch is spectacular. I love all the watches I get. That's the problem, right? I mean, I can't just keep keeping all these watches. Um, God, man. What to do, what to do. Thankfully, I have a uh, supportive wife because otherwise, God forbid. Um, all right, so signed buckle. Great looking dial. Signed back. Signed strap. Where did I see it? It's in here somewhere. Oh, right there. Perfect. Um, not much else to talk about this watch. Um, I already mentioned MSRP, $300. Uh, excellent watch. Um, highly recommend this. Uh, I think I've seen these for about $80, and I would not hesitate for a minute. Um, again, you know, you can swap out these straps. It's a good solid silicone strap. 
depends on what you want. If you're doing sports, this is great. If you want a little bit more of, of just a of a NATO look, this strap, this is not a NATO strap. It actually attaches there. You can see it doesn't go up and over. I prefer these. I really like these straps. You can get them in a variety of colors. Um, but this is an excellent watch, and I probably will not be putting this one up for sale. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. Uh, if you like this review, please give me a check. And if you really liked it, please subscribe. I do new videos. Um, oh my gosh, I don't know. Almost, almost uh, at least one a week. Uh, I'll probably take some time off during the new year. But uh, either way, thank you very much for watching.